Good morning and happy Sabbath. We're happy to be here to worship together at the Miamisburg Seventh day Adventist Church. And for those of you that are on YouTube Live, we welcome you too. And we're so happy that you're here with us today to worship. And I hope that you will receive a blessing as well as each and every one of you. It's great to see your smiling faces behind those masks. I can see it in your eyes, so I know you're smiling at me. I'm glad that you're here and glad that you've come to worship with us. Um, for every part of the program that day that says Barbara, she was not able to be here today, so I will be Barbara. I know I don't look like Barbara, but I'm going to be Barbara. So I just wanted you to know that. And for our invocation, I'm going to read some familiar words from you from a hymn in our hymnal, hymn number 73, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 angels adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the grass, glassy sea. Thousands and ten thousands worship low before thee which wert and art and evermore shall be. Holy, holy, holy. Though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy. There is none beside thee, perfect in power and love and purity. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Let's pray. Holy, holy, holy is you, Father God. You are holy beyond our imagination. You are creator of the universe, and each and every person in this congregation and online this morning is your masterpiece. You created us to glorify and honor you and to reflect you, and you've created us for the good works that you planned for us long ago. Lord, we come to worship our creator God this morning, the one who is perfect and holy and righteous and good. Please receive our worship. May we be blessed as we give it, and may we be blessed as we um, sit in your presence and worship you. Thank you for all that could be here today, and thank you for those out in YouTube land, and may each and every one be blessed as they worship. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Good morning. I am just very, very amazed at how wonderful and amazing God is. There's a lot of churches that haven't yet opened, and we are fortunate to be able to be here today, and I just thank God for that. I don't know. It's okay. <clears throat> you dance over me. While I am unaware, you sing all around, but I never hear the sound. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you, how you love me. Everybody. You dance over me while I am unaware. You sing Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me. You paint the morning sky with miracles in mind. My hope will always stand. You hold me in your hand. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me. How I Your 
love for me. How wide, oh how wide, Lord, how deep, oh how deep, Lord, how great, oh how great is your love for me. Oh, children aren't coming forward, but we do still still have a children's song for you this morning. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It's week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge him yet, there's an unfinished part. 
But I'll be perfect just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hand. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. The mirror of his word, reflections that I see, make me wonder why he never gave me. He loves me as I get to have a pray. Remember, he's the potter and the clay. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. Alright, so my children's story today is about whitewater rafting, and I have a little video up there, and I got permission, this is actually Wayne's story, Mr. King, Mr. Wayne King, he actually went whitewater rafting probably about four years ago, I want to say, and uh, he went on the upper gully, and some of those rapids are um, F5s, which are pretty intense. And he's not a young little whippersnapper anymore. <laughs> and uh, so one of the rides, one of the areas, and I think you'll see there's a pretty big rock right there. He actually tipped out of the raft, kind of like what they're doing just right there. And he got into kind of one of those whirlpool things. It's pretty dangerous to get into. And... That's pretty scary. As you can see, see how they're going around in a circle? That's kind of what Wayne was doing. And uh, he didn't know what was going to happen because you're pretty much at the mercy of the waves. It's a pretty dangerous sport. It's, it's a, I've been white rider rafting. I've never gone on the upper gully. I enjoy it, but I don't know. That's pretty intense. Those F5s are pretty intense. So, but you know what? As Wayne was kind of getting thrown around by the waves, I really believe his angel was there to protect him and to help him because somehow he doesn't quite remember how it happened, but he got back in the raft. And that's kind of a feat in itself. And uh, like I said, he gave me permission to tell this story. And the other part of it is uh, he loves to do things with his family. And just recently he's been asked to go whitewater rafting again, but... He has sought the advice of his family. His daughters actually kind of laid into him pretty, really good. And I kind of did myself. <laughs> and then mom did too. Well, he saw the light. And he wanted everyone to know that part too. That he um, is not going to go white rod or rafting again. Um, that he um, did it once. Or he's done it quite a few times. But this last time was his last time. And, you know, when we have... When we have that hope in our Heavenly Father and we're put in the waves of life, because right now, I tell you what, that's how our 2020 is looking right there. These, these waves are really right after the other. We're getting, society's got us pulled every which way. We're being told this, we're being told that. And I hope maybe we can just rely on research because social media is just not really a good resource um, that's just my little t 10 cents worth that we're, a lot of us are professionals. You've got great resources here. If you have any questions, uh, we have doctors and we have uh, infectious disease doctor. So just rely on your resources. And, and, you know, we have this hope. And let's not let fear take us over when we think of what's happening in the world because we all know what's coming. We know it's not going to get better. We know that... 
we, when we rely on the Heavenly Father to get us through, he'll get us through. We ha and when we think about all these waves that are being thrown at us, let's remember the, my, one of my favorite songs. And this is, our, this is just truly an Adventist song, um, Seventh-day Adventists, have this hope. We have this hope that it's inside our hearts. It's at the core of who we are. We believe and we know that the Lord is coming back. And when we see all this turbulence and we are in that wrath being thrown everywhere, our hope is in the Lord and our hope and uh, cast all our fears away, cast them on the Lord, rely on his strength. He will get us through. And somehow, just like Wayne got back into that raft, we will get back into that raft. And, uh, and we will sing hallelujah to our Heavenly Father when he comes back for us. So I just wanted to say these words uh, to the song, We Have This Hope, and everyone knows it, I'm sure. We have this hope, and it burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Lord. We have the faith that Christ alone imparts, faith in the promise of his word. We believe that the time is here when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing, Hallelujah, Christ is King. We will all say that. We will all see the Lord come back. The ones that never believed in the Heavenly Father, they will see him with their own two, two eyes and they will acknowledge that there was a heavenly father. And we will all, we will all shout hallelujah and praise our heavenly father. And we have this hope that burns in our heart, the hope in the coming of the Lord. So as you think of whitewater rafting, I, my analogy, and I do have to compare it to 2020 and our F5s that we're getting um, seems like every month there's something else. Let's remember that our Heavenly Father will, will pull us back into that laughter, uh, raft and we will get through. And in the end, we will sing heavenly, sing to, glories to our Heavenly Father when he comes back and takes us home. So at this time, we're not um, going to be collecting the tithes and offering, but after service, if you are here, there's a box where you can deposit your tithes and offerings. And for those of you watching on YouTube Live, uh, you can uh, give online or by sending it in the mail. Um, and we thank you for everything that you're doing. I'd like to share a verse with you. See that you excel in this grace of giving. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Lord, I thank you for this time that we have, that we can be here worshiping you. We thank you for all that you give us, and we do give back what we can. I pray that you would take our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, and use them for glorious things in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. I jumped the gun and I apologize to everyone. No apology necessary. Okay. Okay. We kind of made a switch to our program and our outline, and so we're all getting used to doing the new thing. So. It is time to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy dwells forever, and his love dwells forever. So our microphones are here on the left and the right, and we would just love for you to give praises this morning. How, how's the Lord blessing you? Maybe you have a prayer request that you would like to share with your church family, and please don't be afraid of coming to the microphone. These are all people who love you and care about you, and they want to hear your joys. And, you know, your testimony today, your praise or your prayer request might just encourage someone else to get up out of their seat and share something that they want to share. Anyone have anything they want to share this morning? Sheila. Um, a lot of you don't know my son was in a really, really bad accident back on, I think it was May 13 or 14. There was a fatality. Oh, the car had been held in impound. We just got it back. It's been two months, a little over two months. And we did go see the car. He retrieved all of his stuff out of it Monday. And I'll tell you, God was with him. 
and I saw the crash, I saw the car, I saw the impact of his body that hit the seat and ripped some of the fabric on it, there is no way he could have survived unless God had been watching out for him. I have huge praises for God. Amen. Amen. God protects us and keeps us. Sandy. My faith has taken a real hit these last few months. Um, we're on the farm and we see it cloud up and it's raining in other areas and we're not getting any rain. And everything, of course, is turning brown. And then my daughter uh, has been struggling over the year with terrible migraines so much that she's having trouble um, working, moving, functioning. And I keep begging God to please remove them and it's not happening. And God reminded me to start looking at the blessings I do have, not to keep my focus on the things that I'm not seeing that I want to happen. And I'm realizing we're in good health. We're safe. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil going on in the world and God has protected us from it. Our church family is being able to meet and it is a real blessing. So many places they're prohibiting it. So God is blessing us, blessing me and reminding me of how faithful he is. So I praise God. Amen. Ms. Sylvia. Time really flies by. And I have two grandsons that have just passed their MCAT store scores, which is the test they have to take before they apply to medical school. Both have passed with good, solid, good grades. Now they are waiting for interviews to know where they will do their medical school. And these young men are tall. They're, I, I can be up to their shoulder, and they still come and give grandma hugs and kisses, and we, they're just wonderful kids. I'm gonna praise the Lord. I, I, before they have their tests, I always ask them, I say, I'm praying for you. And they say, thank you, grandma. Anyone else? And then Bruce. After Alisa. Um, I'm just giving God thanks for his wonderful blessing in life. And, uh, you know, when Sandy spoke, I've been going through kind of that kind of thing. And um, this week I read in my devotion and the Lord reminded me, he said, here's a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. But the reading pointed out that even when you're praying and it seems you're not getting any answer, God is silent. He's not listening. You've been waiting. You've been patient. You've been doing everything that you think or know you're supposed to do as a Christian. It said that is the faith that overcomes the world. So I just want to encourage us all that the storms that are blowing out here in the world, that everything is being thrown at us. God is saying, I'm still there, even though it seems as if everything, I'm quiet, I'm still there, I'm right here. And it's the faith that we're building or learning during this time that will help us to overcome the world. So I just want to praise God for that reminder that came to me. I just want to praise him for my church family, for friends, for being alive, for being appreciative of family. During this time, I'm reminded of the importance of family, of time with family, of time with people who you love. So I Amen. just want to thank God for that. Bruce? I want to thank the Lord for sound, sound good. Amen. Amen. You guys, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> really, you don't. <laughs> I, this team back here, you just have no idea how many hours we have spent and cried, <laughs> at least me, <laughs> or just frustration of trying to figure it out. We finally got a guy from the conference, Casper, and he came and helped us and gave us some extremely good advice, and God is so good. Deidre? Good morning, everyone. I just want to praise the Lord for the Miamisburg church family. Amen. I have to say to you, sometimes I don't think you know how good you have it. You have some wonderful people here. And I was asked in March to come to Orlando and sing for a big gala.
for a spiritual festival that would contribute money through fundraising for students in music school, African-American students who were studying music. Well, because of COVID, they closed it down. So now the gentleman is saying to me, can you just record the three songs that we needed you to do? And Bruce and his lovely wife and Terry came here with me. What, what day was it, y'all? Wednesday? Raul. And Raul. Oh, where's Raul? I forgot Raul was the... The you. cameraman. And they recorded the songs. I sent them to the gentleman. He's very pleased with them. He loves your backdrop. They had the cross lit and the, and the beautiful um, uh, uh, stained glass turn out really well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And thank you for having such wonderful people here at Meister. Amen. Thank Amen. You. God is good. Dave? Just a couple of observations. I feel better when I'm not following the news. Closely. Yes. Yes. Amen. And I've come to realize that this is a time of testing. Whether it is in fact the beginning of the end time events or not, for us, it is a season of testing. And I've come to realize that I cannot rely upon the wisdom of men. But my heavenly father is good. And my heavenly father is sovereign. And he will watch over us. He will watch over us, whether we know it or not, whether we perceive it or not. Fall into his arms in times of trouble. And you will find him faithful in his love for you. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? The Lord is taught me a lesson yesterday and it, it, it struck me or reminded me as they were singing the children's song, he's still working on me. And um, I took a 10, 11 year old and a 12 year old canoeing yesterday. And um, it was a challenge. <laughs> it was fun, but it was a challenge. And I'm trying to instruct them and teach them how to, what, what rowing looks like. And if you're on the left, you go right. And if you're on the right, you go left. And Somehow they couldn't get that down. And, and, and as I was, I was starting to feel frustrated, the Lord reminded me of that text in Ephesians and be patient with one another's faults. You know, he's still working on us, still teaching us. And just as he's teach, as we're trying to teach our little children, so is God teaching us. And after the day was all done, even if my couple moments of frustration, they both came to me and gave me a hug and said, Pastor Lloyd, we had such a good time. And, um, you know, that's how our Heavenly Father is. He come and embraces us. In, in spite of ourselves, and, and he just loves us the way we are, and, and he's so patient with us and so caring for us. So now at this time, Isaac and Sarah can come up and lead us in our prayer song, and then we'll have prayer. We have such wonderful little helpers. It's pretty great. Blind, but now I see. 
see. I once was blind, but now I see. I don't know how, but when he touched me, I once was blind, but now I see. And now my life song sings. And now my life song sings. And now my life song sings. I once was dead, but now. Once was dead, but now I live. Now my life to you I give. Now my life to you I give. Now my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let my life song sing to you, hallelujah, hallelujah, let my life song sing to you. Those of you who would like to kneel, I invite you to kneel. Those of you who want to bow in your pew, I invite you to bow. And those of you who would like to stand, I welcome you to stand as we pray to our maker. Thank you so much. Father, happy Sabbath. So grateful for rest depicted in, the, in your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to save each and every person who's, who's kneeled and bowed in their hearts this morning in this room. We were once lost. We were once blind, but now we are found. And Father, we want to say thank you this morning. I want to say thank you for being our creator, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for pursuing us. Thank you for pursuing those that we love. Oh, Jesus, send your spirit to draw them nigh to thee. All the names in this jar, Lord, represent people that we love. You know every name. You saw us write them down. You saw us put them in the jar. You hear our heart's prayers every day as we continually ask you to please Go get that lost sheep, Father God. Use us. Give us holy boldness that we might witness to those we love. That we might shine love that only can come from Jesus. Lord, this morning you have heard the many praises and the many, many requests. Thank you for protecting Justin in that car accident. Thank you for the grandchildren who love us and and are doing well in school. Thank you for being with us when our faith is tested and we don't understand why a prayer is not answered, but Lord, we know you are with us. We know it in our brain and sometimes we don't always feel it in our heart and sometimes it's hard to cling when, it's, when we're struggling so deeply. But God, you are faithful. Thank you for a sound team that has labored so hard and so long to try to 
bring together a good audio and visual for our, our YouTube live channel, Lord, as we live in these new normals of things that we need to do. Thank you for a church family that is willing to help and, and is always ready to give. Lord, I am sure there are many unspoken requests in this congregation this morning. And I pause for a moment to allow them to lift them to your throne. Holy Spirit, please hear and interpret these prayers. Thank you, Father, for hearing. Thank you for loving. Thank you for giving. We come here this morning to worship you. I pray that your heart has been blessed with what gifts have been presented so far. May you be with the speaker, be with me, and anoint my lips that I can share the message you've asked me to share today as my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading will be on the screen this morning. I'm going to ask you to read this paragraph with me together as a congregation. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of the truth, which is according to godliness, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago. Got a crown of being in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a crown of being in that kingdom, in that good news. I'm gonna lay down at this world, gonna shoulder up my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, in that good news. I got a robe up in that kingdom, in that good news. Got a robe up in that kingdom, in that good news. Well, I'm gonna lay down at this world, gonna shoulder up my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, in that good news. I got news to tell you, I got good news. I got news to tell you, I got good news. Well, he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. I got news to tell you, I got good news. I got a savior in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a savior in that kingdom, in that good news. Well, I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up my cross. I'm gonna take it home to my Jesus, in that good news, good news.
Good news. We have good news, and that is the truth. Get wired for sound. Thank you guys so much. I'm just so grateful. Bruce has given me yellow lines, so I know my limits. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Set my mask there out of the way and get things situated. If you want to open your Bibles to Luke, that's where we're going to be in a moment for a story. We're going to be a little bit all over today, but that'll be the first story that we're going to be at, Luke chapter 24. You know, last week we talked about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the signs that we see that it's for real. And we read the words of Jesus, and he told us the signs. He told us what we need to be looking for. And wars and rumors of wars, people lacking in love, people, more sin is increasing, increasing, pestilence, diseases. We could go on and on and on and on. And some of us have been waiting a long time. I've been waiting almost 60 years. Some more. But we've been waiting for Jesus to come. And sometimes in the waiting, we can begin to lose hope. We can lose hope with what is happening around us. And we think, Lord, what is going on? We see our loved ones not coming to Jesus. We think, when will it happen? We want to see it in our lifetime. Seems that there's never going to be an end to all that is wrong in this world. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. Even though we know it needs to get worse and worse, we pray for it to be better. Because we don't want it to be worse and worse. We want to enjoy life a little bit and not have a mask on our face and, you know, confined at home and not able to go hang out with our friends. And I've had to give up meeting with my weekly group that I love to meet with face to face. And, it, and I'm sorry, but Zoom just doesn't cut it. I'm about Zoomed out. But a Christian is meant to hope. We have hope in Jesus. And although I say those words, I'm not criticizing us or disciplining us for when we lose hope. I just want you to understand that we do have hope. Amen. And we need to rehearse God's promises in our hearts and in our minds. We need to hold on to them. Write them on a card if you have to on a day you're feeling bad. Rehearse that hopeful verse over and over and over again because that's what's going to bring you courage call a friend pray together so that's what brings me to this story i'll try to remember to keep up with my slides this week in luke 24 because here's two guys that are walking down the road and they have lost hope and we're going to read it because i i think the words I don't want to paraphrase it. I want you to hear the story, and I'm hoping that you can hear it new and fresh and with this thought of hope in your mind as they're walking down this road to Emmaus. Luke 24, starting with verse 13, and I'm reading from the New Living Testament. That same day, what day? Do we know what day it was? Resurrection morning. That same day, Two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. You ever had a conversation with someone about all the things that are happening in the world? And you're just sharing about your life and your loss and your hurts and your pains. And that's what they're doing. They're rehearsing what has happened. In their minds, what has taken place. They have lost hope. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. As we're talking about what's going on in life, Jesus has never stopped walking with us. Just as he's walking with these two young men on the road to Emmaus, Jesus is walking with us in our distress, in our hurt, in our pain. But God kept them from recognizing him. You know, sometimes in our journey, we don't recognize that God is walking with us at all. We just think that God is absent and he's not answering our prayers. And that's what it feels like. 
He asked them, Jesus asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces, and then one of them, Cleopas, replied, well, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. How could you not know what is going on? Sometimes I've had a conversation with a friend and I'll be talking about what's happening or going on in the world and they seem oblivious because they haven't been watching the news. I wish I hadn't watched the news either because it just distresses you and, or you get on social media and see everybody's posts and what they're saying and they seem disconnected. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles. He was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. Now notice that they're not believing that he's the Messiah, the one that they had hoped for. They just say he's a good prophet, a good teacher. Because he's died and he wasn't found in the tomb, they just figured, well, he's not the guy. But our leading priests and other religious, verse 20, but our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. Was their idea of salvation different than what Jesus was bringing? Yes, it was very different. It was very, very different. They had hoped for someone who would save them from the Romans. They had hoped for someone who would set Israel up as the nation, the people, the church, the one who's had God. And it didn't happen the way things they thought should happen. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they have seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said, because they can't believe their report. Just had to throw that in there. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Isn't that how we are sometimes? We read God's word, we read his promises, we read them over and over again, and then the very next moment or the very next hour, we're grumbling and complaining because things aren't going the way we planned. But yet God's promises never changed. They're always true. They're always real. We act as if Jesus never said we will have hardships in this life. Because they are real, we will have hardships in this life. Verse 26, wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them. Through the writings of Moses, I would have been loved to have been with this Bible study. This would have been the most amazing Bible study that we've ever heard. Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he had, were going on, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. So he went home with them. You know, I've had Jesus do that in my life. Come in and sup in my space. Invite himself into my corner and help me see what I couldn't see before. And it's powerful. And I'm humbled and I'm amazed how patient our God is. 
as Jesus is walking with them and he's breaking the bread and he's opening the word so that they can know and understand. And as they sat down to eat, he took the bread and he blessed it and then he broke it and he gives it to them and suddenly their eyes are opened. Their eyes are open and they recognized him and at that moment he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. I can imagine they ran like as fast as they could. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, Jesus, who said to them, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. It's true. It's real. Our hopes have been realized. What we thought wasn't true is true. What didn't come to pass did come to pass. Jesus is the Messiah. We have heard it before. And we hear it now. Jesus is coming again. He is. It's true. We can't get so connected to this world and so hung up on this world that we lose sight of that. If we believe in God, we should never give up on hope. We have to dive into God's word and find courage there. You know, in the book of Titus, turn with me there. Whoops. Titus is written to advise Titus and his responsibility of supervising the churches in Crete. Now, we're not here to study the book of Titus, but I noticed something in the book of Titus that three times Paul encourages them to have hope. The first one is the scripture that we read this morning. It says, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness, in the hope of eternal life, that's why I'm writing you, which God, who cannot lie, he promised ages ago. And if you flip with me over to chapter 2, verse 13, While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. Paul is saying, I believe it now more than I ever did because of what I've experienced. Because of my experience on the Damascus Road. He's saying there is hope. Jesus is real. He's alive. He's in heaven. He's in the kingdom. We have hope of eternal life and the second coming. Chapter 3, verse 7. Turn with me. It's not on the screen. Because of his grace, the grace of Jesus, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence or hope, this word means, that we will inherit eternal life. Hope is necessary for the human spirit, just as necessary to the human spirit as oxygen is to life. That is my belief. I looked it up in the Bible. Hope is mentioned about 180 times. You can go Bible Gateway or whatever you want to do. Out of those 180 times, 50 plus, a little over 50, always are connected in some way to finding hope alone in God. We have hope alone in God. Now, we might have placed our hope in something else. Maybe we placed our hopes in the job that we thought would make us lots of money and give us what we want. Maybe we placed our hope in a marriage that we thought would be the end-all, be-all of all relationships, and you find out it's a struggle. Maybe we put our hope in our children. We make them our life and our goals, and we want to see things fulfilled in their lives, and when things don't turn out the way we thought they should have, we're disappointed. Maybe we've lost a loved one and we prayed and prayed and prayed for God to heal them. I had so much hope that God could heal my brother and I begged for it. I pleaded for it. And when I saw him getting just a little bit better, I was like, oh, God's going to do it. God's going to heal my brother. But he didn't. 
And I was mad, Sandy, kind of like you were feeling about your daughter, watching her suffer. Why, God? Maybe we're like Job's wife that says, just curse God and die. But no, we have hope. I already said that. I'm trying to get this to click, and it's not wanting to be obedient. Whoops. Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's a prayer that we can pray for ourselves. We can turn that scripture into a prayer. Say, Lord, please, may your hope fill my heart with joy and peace. May I believe like I've never believed before so that you will abound in hope in my life and the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask for that. Put it on a card. Use it every day. Ask the Lord to give you courage. 2 Thessalonians 2.16 and 17. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. This is just a couple examples of the text about hope. Hope connects us to the future. Hope gives us vision for what will be. Just as our memories connect us with the past, hope is what will be. We can think back on what has happened, and we can't change that. But we have a hope and a future that will change our lives miraculously in the twinkling of an eye. God will change us. Sometimes our hopes are very misplaced. Those of you that have hope, of receiving eternal life without ever putting their trust in Jesus, I think get very disappointed. We think that we can just believe and Jesus will take care of all the rest and we don't want to follow what his word says. We don't want to live the life that the scripture is calling us to. But it just can't be here. It has to be here. I mean, we need to know it here but it needs to make itself six inches deeper down into my heart. We need to know it, that it's true. There are three reasons that we can have hope that Paul is speaking of. Word of God points us to hope. The cross of Christ points us to hope. And the resurrection points us to hope. It gives us hope. We're going to look at a few texts about the word of God, what Paul says, for whatever was written in earlier times, Romans 15, 4, whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that though through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Now, as I was reading that text, what was their scriptures? Did they have what we have? They don't have what we have. They just had the Torah, maybe the Psalms, Proverbs. So their Bible was much thinner than our Bible. We have this great, amazing thing that, that we can hold in our hands, 66 books long, put together by how many authors? And it's the cohesive story about our salvation, and we have promise upon promise upon promise. They didn't have all the words of Jesus. We have all the words of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We can sit here and look at those scriptures and compare them and read God's promises and know that his word is true. Know that it's true. I want to look at a few stories briefly, and I will paraphrase these because these men lost hope, some of them, and they found hope again in believing. I love the story of Elijah because I can relate to it so well. Anyone who has struggled with depression likes Elijah. When I first read his story, I couldn't believe that it was in the Bible because I thought it was just such a sin for me to struggle with depression. And here's Elijah being chased by Jezebel. He thinks his life is over. He goes under a tree and he says, you know, everybody hates me. I'm just going to eat worms. Kind of that kind of attitude in his mind. <laughs> And I love it because Jesus shows up by way of an angel and, and says, what are you doing here? And, you know, and Elijah gives his long thing that life is over and I'm going to go eat worms and I'm all by myself and there's no one following God but me. And what does God do? 
He feeds him and nourishes him. He gives him food. And again, he does it. He nourishes him. He feeds him and gives him food. And finally, he ends up in this cave. And God, again, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Oh, I'm the only one left. There's no one else who's worshiping God. I'm all by myself. And then God takes him through these series of events, an earthquake, a fire, and all this stuff going on. And it's not until he hears the still, small whisper of a voice. That's when God was present. Be still and know that I am God. And he says, you know what, Elijah? You're not alone. You're not alone. I have 7,000 more who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. Sometimes we can feel so alone and so isolated, and we can start running this story or this map in our mind, and we are going over and over all these things that are going wrong. I'm going to tell you, pick up a phone. Pick up a phone. Call a prayer warrior. Because that's when you need to be sharing your heart. Because someone needs to redirect your mind. Call someone you can trust on the phone. That's what I did when I was in the throes of severe depression. The Lord impressed me to call this woman on the phone that I would never talk to. She made me get up out of my bed and I went and visited her in her space and we spent some time together in God's word and scripture and it helped me. She helped me to stand up and start a new direction. But I thought it felt like life was over. Depression is not a sin. But if you lay there and you don't do nothing about it, that is. Try to get some help. And I, I'm not simplifying depression. Please don't believe that I'm not. It is hard. Some people have very chronic depression. It's very, very difficult. What about the story of David? I love the story of David. He was just doing what he was told by dad, taking some food out to his brothers. They're all there. They're all, what are you doing here? You're just here because you're trying to check up on us. You know, what are you doing? And of course, he's like this 17-year-old young man. He's very, very curious, and he wants to know what's going on. And they tell him the story, you know, of whoever can go out and kill this giant, they're going to get Saul's daughter as a wife. He's, well, I'll do this. And of course, they think that he's just so proud and full of himself, and how can you possibly go kill a giant? You're just some kid. We all know the story very, very well. This is one situation where the, this young man knows who God is. He has not lost hope, and he uses, he says, what does he say? You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord and heaven's armies. Have you ever faced a giant in your life? I think every single one of us can put up our hand and say, yes, we have faced giants in our lives. We had no idea how we would overcome. Caregiving my dad was one of the most difficult things that I ever did. It felt like a giant in my life. Watching him decline and lose his mind. I was exhausted. Cried a lot. Every day I got in the word and I sought strength from my creator, knowing that he was the only one who could help me face the giant every single day. And did David face that giant? Oh, yes, he did. Because he knew who his God was. He knew who his hope was in. And it's kind of a gory story. You know, he goes out there, hits him with a rock, and then chops his head off with a sword. Who needs television? How about the story of Joseph? Arrogant little guy. Like to flash his dreams in front of his brothers and his father. He was spoiled, had the coat of many colors. I'm sure there was much jealousy. He was a favored one. He gets mistreated by his family. He gets mistreated by Potiphar's wife. Potiphar himself throws him in jail. But God took every situation. It's, it's, it's after Joseph, I, they don't share that he's discouraged, but he's, he's in the midst of a struggle and he, he follows God, he chooses God, he has hope in God, and God makes him second in command because of his faithfulness. Now, I'm not saying God's going to make us all second in command. That might not be. 
But wherever he has you is where he wants you, is where you can tell the best story to your family or to your neighbors. Stand tall for Jesus. He'll give you hope for your future and what he's called you to. How about Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego? Powerful stories. And I think to myself, here's some young men who got taken from their homeland, became eunuchs, never got to marry, had to live in Babylon for the rest of their Christian life. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that would be pretty painful to never see your family ever again. To never be able to go visit mom and have a home-cooked meal. How heart-rendering sadness, but yet here's some young men who have been taught so well, raise a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. They are perfect examples of that in God's word. They had hope and a God who would take care of them. And they modeled that through their whole relationship journey, not bowing down to an idol, not praying. I mean, not, not, to, not to stop praying. They continued to pray. Interpreting dreams, doing whatever God has called them to do. They found hope. This clicker just doesn't want to obey me today. Nope, went one too far. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and that was just a few stories in the Bible. You can go read more for yourself. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us sin that so, and let us run. Sorry, don't let us sin. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Next slide, please. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand and the throne of God. Consider him who endeared such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus suffered so that we could not lose heart. He said, look at this great cloud of witnesses. Read the stories of everyone who went before you. Take courage from those stories. Write them on your heart. Memorize them. Remember where God has brought you from. Recall your stories. As I was preparing this sermon and God was reminded me of all the things that he's brought me through in my life, I have no reason to lose hope, even when we're facing daily challenges. Because if, like David, we truly believe in the God that we serve, we have no reason to lose hope. We really don't, brothers and sisters. Just like our song says, we have this hope. We can trust in our Heavenly Father. Cross of Christ. Greater love has no one than this that one lay down his life for his friends. That's what Jesus did for us. You know, out of all of the religions, our God is the only God who pursues us. We don't have to appease our God. He gives himself that we might have salvation. All other gods in the universe, all other created gods, not the creator God, but the created gods, you have to appease them. Our God is not like that. I praise the Lord for that. Next slide. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for all of us, for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? If God gave us his son on a cross so that we might have salvation, then he must care about every other detail of our life. But the number one priority was salvation. All the rest is we have to get through this world so that we can have eternity and live with him forever. Colossians 1, 21 to 22, and although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you, present tense, in his, fresh, in his fleshly body through death 
in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. That holy means set apart. It's not the kind of holy we think of. We're set apart for God's kingdom. As I was reading that text, I was thinking, yeah, I was alienated. I was hostile. I was definitely engaged in evil deeds. Yet God has reconciled Lori. God has reconciled me in his fleshly body through his death in order that Lori can be presented before him, set apart, blameless, and beyond reproach. We either believe it or we don't. That's God's promise. That's his word. We have hope. How about the empty tomb? Because if Jesus isn't resurrected, the cross isn't enough, brothers and sisters. The cross is not enough. He must be resurrected. For us to have resurrected life, Jesus has to have resurrected life. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, Jesus, into Christ Jesus, have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Next slide. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified, past tense, with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with. That's the, the, the word just left my mind. I'll come back to me. The body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. Next slide. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. That is wonderful hope. That's the reality of our lives right now. We are no longer slaves to sin. Three reasons for hope. God's word the cross of Christ and the empty tomb. Next slide. Life with Christ is an endless hope. Life without Christ is a hopeless end. Could not find who that quote was by. Bruce always finds them for me, so I'll leave it to him. So I'm asking you today, do you have hope? Are you resting in Christ do you believe that Jesus is coming again? I hope that you do, because we can find hope in Jesus and his word. Maybe this morning you've had a life that felt like it had no hope. Maybe your hope was misplaced. Mine's been misplaced numerous times. Maybe your hope was your good works. I found that to not work very well. So if it's working for you, you can let me know. The harder I try, the more I would fail. Is your hope in the fact that you come to church and sit in this pew week from week and you hope that's going to make your relationship with Jesus Christ? I hope not. The Bible is full of those kinds of people, religious people, those were the ones that Jesus had words for that said, you whitewash tombs. It's not the religion that gets you into heaven. It's relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about being, not doing. Although we do because of the relationship, but that's because of the works that Jesus has created for us. That's a whole nother. We just preached the whole book of Ephesians. Hopefully you remember some of that. Your hope needs to be in Jesus, in Christ alone. Let's sing that song together, for he is our only hope. Would you stand with us for our closing song?
In Christ alone my heart is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine. Bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. Life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell or scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Just give me a second. Heavenly Father, Lord. We do stand in you. We want to stand in you. Lord, we fail at it often. But we realize and understand that it is in Christ alone that we have hope. We can't hope in anything in this world. Things are kind of going crazy in our world, Lord. And we see it. We know it. We understand that. You're coming soon. But, Lord, it's so hard to wait. But teach us to wait on you. Teach us to cling to the cross and the resurrection and, and, and to know and believe in our hearts and in our minds that you have done it all. It is done. It is finished. We trust you, Lord. We love you. Help us to love you more. Help us to trust in you more. Help us to realize the hope that we have for every single day. May we wake up and claim each day anew in Jesus Christ and live for you alone. 
That is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Remember that you'll be dismissed row by row after the postlude.